Elizabeth Taylor, one of the most beautiful actresses ever to come out of Hollywood. As you may know, she will undergo surgery soon for an apparently benign brain tumor. Elizabeth Taylor is one of the greatest movie stars in Hollywood history. But Elizabeth's personal life is equally attractive with eight marriages and four children. Her heritage is followed by grandchildren who grew up into talented and beautiful individuals. Let's take a look at and compare. Before learning about the lives of Elizabeth Taylor's grandchildren, let's take a look at the outstanding romance in her life and the love affairs that contributed to building her legend. Elizabeth's personal life always attracts attention, with eight marriages, including twice, married to the same person. These marriages not only shaped her image, but also the focus of the media. As the biography Alexander Walker pointed out, her romantic relationships began with the teenager who attracted great attention. In 1948, MGM announced a love affair between Elizabeth Taylor and football player Glenn Davis with the notice that they would get married when returning from Korea. Their love affair, though short, lasted only four months, quickly ended with an engagement in March 1949 and broke up shortly after April. In the same year, at the age of 17, Elizabeth was engaged to William Pawley Jr., a billionaire and former military pilot, in a relationship marked by love letters and a few meetings. The difference in the age of 11 years between them caused some controversy, but Elizabeth talked about the deep love that she felt for William, feeling that this was the kind of love that she had never experienced before, a perfect, complete, and mature love. However, according to a longtime friend of Paulie, as reported in the Daily Mail, Elizabeth Taylor decided to end the engagement ceremony to focus on his acting career. During that time, Hollywood boss Howard Hughes also proposed to her and proposed a large amount of money for her parents, but Taylor refused this proposal. Even so, she still desires to get married, nurtured with traditional values and beliefs in love in marriage. Looking back, Elizabeth admitted that at that time she was not emotional. As a child star, she lived in a world protected and away from reality. She hoped that marriage would help her find freedom and help her separate from her parents' control and the grip of MGM, where she worked. But behind the lavish weddings Hollywood once witnessed, a complicated story about love and desire for freedom is gradually being revealed. Will Elizabeth Taylor's happy dreams become a terrible nightmare, or can she escape the control of a rich but troublesome husband? In October 1949, Elizabeth met Conrad Nicky Hilton, the son of the famous hotel tycoon at Mocambo nightclub in Los Angeles. Their romance exploded quickly and led to a fairy wedding on May 6, 1950, considered one of the most luxurious weddings in Hollywood that year. The ceremony attracted 600 guests, while thousands of fans gathered outside to congratulate. MGM Studios gave Elizabeth a $3,500 wedding dress for her role in the movie The Father of the Bride, coinciding with the wedding time. After the ceremony, the couple started a two-week honeymoon in Paris. However, this marriage lasted only eight months. In her 1965 memoir, Elizabeth Taylor, an unofficial memoir, she frankly said, The honeymoon in Europe lasted for two weeks. I should say that the marriage just only lasts for two weeks. The marriage ended in divorce due to Hilton's increasingly violent behavior. In a shocking revelation, Taylor said in the documentary, Elizabeth Taylor, The Lost Tapes, that Hilton's abuse continued even when she was pregnant. Just a year after the first marriage ended, Elizabeth stepped down to the ceremony with Michael Wilding, her co-star in the movie Ivanhoe in 1952. Despite the difference in age up to 20 years, Elizabeth Taylor and Michael Wilding 
still maintain love and have two sons, Michael Jr. and Christopher. Taylor often recalls happy memories about Michael, saying in 2006 that he was a great father. However, her developing career put pressure on the marriage, leading to their divorce in 1957, just five years after getting married. In a documentary about her life, Taylor revealed that Wilding's indecisive assertiveness has contributed to the breakup of the relationship, saying, I need someone to dominate me. Just a month after the divorce, she married the film producer that won the Oscar, Mike Todd, whom she met at a rowing party. The love between them quickly flourished and led to the birth of their daughter, Elizabeth Frances Liza Todd. Taylor once said that the marriage with Todd was the happiest in her life, shared, God, I love him, my self-esteem, my image, everything increases under the care of the caring and your love. According to biography documents, Todd often surprised Taylor with lavish gifts, including sparkling jewelry from Van Cleef and Arpels, which added to joy in her life. However, the tragedy occurred in 1958, when Mike Todd died in a catastrophic plane crash in New Mexico. His plane, named Liz, was in distress, leaving Elizabeth in a state of shock and extreme grief. She recalled the feeling when she heard the news, screaming in pain, No, 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 not Mike, not Mike, God, God, please don't let Mike have to go. In a reverse reflection, Elizabeth Taylor shared in the documentary Elizabeth Taylor, The Lost Tapes, that although she was attracted to Mike Todd, her appeal was not completely strong. In the 1950s, she was involved in a controversial affair with Eddie Fisher, causing him to divorce his first wife, Debbie Reynolds, a close friend of Taylor. Many people believe that Taylor's appeal to Fisher is a way for her to cope with the pain after Mike Todd's death. The couple was married in 1959, but their marriage quickly cracked when Taylor started working with Richard Burton, her future husband. The relationship between Taylor and Fisher was covered with allegations of violence, including a worrying incident when Fisher was accused of pointing his gun at her head and saying, Don't worry, you're so beautiful to get to get suffering. Kill. Their marriage ended with a divorce in 1964. Only ten days later, Taylor married Burton. In Elizabeth Taylor, The Lost Tapes, Taylor frankly expressed his thoughts on the marriage with Fisher, calling this a big mistake. She explained that their relationship was built on friendship with Mike Todd, and she felt sympathetic to Fisher. Taylor admits that she does not know how to get rid of the marriage, despite realizing her mistake before getting married. Taylor's sincere reflection on the marriage with Fisher shows her complicated relationships and personal struggles. To understand the life of Elizabeth Taylor, it is impossible not to mention Richard Burton, who is considered the greatest love of her life. Although they first met at a party in the 1950s, it was not until the reunion on the filming set of Cleopatra in 1962 that Taylor was sexy. This love will become an unforgettable part of the story of her life. In her memoirs, Elizabeth Taylor wrote that from the moment she saw Richard Burton in the Cleopatra studio, she was irresistible, and her love for him followed her throughout the majority of her adult life. Their relationship lasted for about a decade, marked by heated controversy, mixed with intense passion. Taylor admitted that she was always dominated by her passion, and she was completely aware of what she participated in when she loved Burton. Their marriage became so famous that they received the nickname the Battle Burtons, reflecting their public and conflict quarrels. However, after many years together, their love could not tolerate the turbulence of life, and they eventually divorced in 1974. After finishing the relationship with Burton, there was no information that Elizabeth Taylor had a love affair with actor Peter O'Toole. 
reports from friends close to her, have revealed that they have participated in a romantic love story, although there is no specific evidence to be public. The Daily Mail reports that O'Toole was said to have boasted to Richard Burton, Taylor's future husband and a former close friend, that he was a more reliable and accomplished lover than Burton after Taylor confided in him. Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton reignited their love for one another less than a year following their first divorce. The ex-couple reportedly ended up in each other's arms as they cried from happiness after a reunion that began as a meeting to resolve financial issues. Marie Claire UK After that, in October 1975, they planned to secretly remarry in Botswana's beautiful Chobe National Park. Dearest Hubs, can you believe it? Taylor wrote in a touching letter to Burton, expressing her excitement at being reunited. I vow that our marriage will last forever and that there will be no more divorces between us. Dear wife, you have my undying devotion. Elizabeth Taylor's love for Richard Burton remained strong even after their second marriage ended in divorce. She thought deeply about how our love endured even after we couldn't live together in 1988. She admitted it, her feelings still fresh. Even now, just thinking about him makes me cry. My feelings for him are so strong. Even after they married other people, it was evident that their love for one another had never fully waned. They were close friends until Burton passed away in 1984. Richard Burton's last love letter to Elizabeth Taylor was written in the days leading up to his death. According to Sam Kashner and Nancy Schonberger's book, Furious Love, Elizabeth Taylor, Richard Burton, and the Marriage of the Century, the letter reached Taylor's home following his burial ceremony. In his sincere expression, Burton longed to be embraced by Elizabeth once more, the one place he truly felt at home. This letter was cherished by Taylor, who kept it by her bedside as a symbol of their everlasting love. Many of Taylor's early relationships were turbulent affairs, but they were all vivacious. But as she became older, she began to value her family and her philanthropic work more highly. The pleasure of her children brought her much delight, and she loved her job as a mother. As she watched her children enjoy life's little pleasures, Taylor expressed her profound happiness. In an interview she gave to Harper's Bazaar in 2011, her grandkids and great-grandchildren carry on her love and energy to this day, and their descendants will carry on her legacy. Ten beautiful grandkids and four great-grandchildren were a gift from Liz Taylor's offspring as they matured and began families of their own. For those lucky enough to have Grandma Elizabeth Taylor, here is a look inside their life. Wilding Layla The first grandchild of Elizabeth Taylor, Layla Wilding, was born in 1971. Michael Wilding Jr., Elizabeth's firstborn, and Johanna Likidan are her parents. She splits her time between teaching yoga and working as a graphic designer in Portland, Oregon. As a child growing up in Northern California, Layla treasured every holiday and Sunday spent with her legendary grandma. According to Layla's interview with Art and Understanding magazine, Taylor's love for her grandkids was unconditional and showed no signs of partiality. Layla treasured the times she spent with her artistic grandma, Taylor, who was known for her professional beauty tips and stylish hairstyles. Layla was so taken by Taylor's dramatic smoky eye makeup that she echoed her grandmother's cheeky advice, if you've got it, flaunt it. This sentence perfectly captured Taylor's quirky and carefree attitude toward grandparenting. Layla Wilding portrayed her grandma, Elizabeth Taylor, as an activist in a 2017 interview with Town & Country magazine. In the same interview, Layla recalled how her grandma had been an early advocate 
for the AIDS awareness movement and how she proudly wore her badge for the remainder of her life. Through the utilization of her vast reach and influence, she was able to convert a simple symbol into a potent spark for a more widespread movement. The kind character of her grandmother, Elizabeth Taylor, is something that she remembers with fondness, and she treasures the private moments that they spent together. Within the context of a poignant interview with people, Layla fondly recalled the gentle hugs and snuggles that she enjoyed with Taylor, cherishing the affection and warmth that characterized their unique connection. Elizabeth Taylor's second grandchild, Naomi DeLuce Wilding, was born in 1976. She is also Layla's sister. Additionally, she is an ambassador for the Elizabeth Taylor AIDS Foundation, carrying on the tradition of her grandmother in the battle against HIV AIDS. She is also co-director of the Wilding Cran Gallery in Los Angeles, which she co-directs with her husband, Anthony Cran. Naomi, Layla's younger sister, had a unique experience being Elizabeth Taylor's granddaughter, an experience that was separate from the intimate bond that her elder sister had with Elizabeth Taylor. Because Naomi was raised in the United Kingdom, which was physically separated from her famous grandmother, her interactions with Taylor were primarily restricted to holiday visits. This was because there was a four-year age gap between them. Naomi attempted to begin a career in fashion design in Manhattan during the 1990s. However, her efforts were unsuccessful since her apartment was broken into, which caused her to lose her flat. Elizabeth Taylor, her grandmother, came to her aid and volunteered to assist her. Fortunately, she accepted her offer. She was assured by her grandmother, Don't worry, I'll get you a lawyer as Naomi described in an article that was published in Art and Understanding magazine. Everything will be okay after we have resolved the issue with that green card. In the end, Naomi eventually relocated to California to live with her grandmother, and she never left. Naomi claims that the commitment to action that Elizabeth Taylor displayed made an indelible mark on her. In a statement to Town & Country magazine, Naomi mentioned that her grandmother was honored with a standing ovation during a memorial concert held in London in 1992 to remember Freddie Mercury. This event served to emphasize her grandmother's dedication to spreading awareness about AIDS. Naomi added that her grandmother thought that the battle against AIDS was about reducing the stigma that was associated with the disease and teaching people about it. She also believed that wearing the red ribbon was a show of pride and togetherness within the community. The memory of Naomi sitting on the floor of her grandmother's dressing room, transfixed by her change as she prepared for a performance, is one that she cherishes as she shared with today. She said that even though her grandmother was a superstar, Elizabeth Taylor was a warm, caring, and welcome presence in her life. She was always ready to greet her grandchildren with open arms. Dame Elizabeth Carson Elizabeth Carson claims that her grandmother, Elizabeth Taylor, was responsible for the creation of important memories with her. Elizabeth Carson remembered an amusing event that occurred when she proposed that her grandma go to Sephora. The story was discussed in an interview with Town and Country magazine. However, their enjoyable visit was cut short when Elizabeth Taylor was recognized and they had to be led out of the store in a hurry. Eliza had a close connection with the famed actress as a result of the fact that she spent a considerable portion of her adolescent years at the opulent home that belonged to her grandmother. As a result of the fact that they regularly traveled together, including a memorable excursion to the Dominican Republic, their relationship extended beyond the confines of familial connections. During her conversation with Over 60, Eliza recalled that the summer they spent together was so delightful that she decided to prolong her stay. 
she always spoke up for what was right, which was a trait that strongly connected with Eliza and motivated her to follow in Taylor's footsteps by pursuing a profession in social work at the Department of Child Protection in Manhattan. Eliza also remarked on the enduring influence that her grandmother had on her life, noting that she always stood up for what was right. Eliza continued to commemorate her grandmother's memory by working as an ambassador for the Elizabeth Taylor AIDS Foundation. She joined her cousins in their efforts to promote awareness and support for AIDS research. Eliza's grandma was a courageous and courageous woman. In her acknowledgement of the significant role that her grandmother had in drawing attention to the condition, she stated, My grandmother used her fame to her advantage to gain public attention for a disease that people were not only afraid of, but often in complete denial about. Eliza, who is employed with the Department of Child Protection in New York City, has voiced her appreciation for the advocacy that her grandmother has provided. She stated, I often say a silent thanks to my grandmother, because if it were not for her and other advocates with her shared passion, this may not have been the case today. There have been occasions when infants delivered to women who are HIV positive have tested negative, which is a wonderful outcome of the progress that has been made in the sector. She went on to say, that the improvements in treatment and prevention continue to bring her to tears. Through her persistent work and unflinching dedication, Eliza carries on the legacy of her grandmother. She exemplifies the same steadfast commitment to compassion and activism that Elizabeth Taylor was known for, therefore preserving both her memory and her spirit, the Wildings with Caleb and Andrew. The eldest grandchild of Elizabeth Taylor, Caleb Wilding, was born in 1983. He is the son of Christopher Wilding and Aileen Getty, a descendant of the affluent Getty family. Caleb Wilding is the eldest grandson of Elizabeth Taylor. In the year 1983, his parents decided to adopt him, and shortly after that, they adopted a younger sibling. In contrast to several of his family, Caleb likes to live a secluded life, and there is not much information available about him. One thing that has been mentioned about him, however, is that he and his cousin, Tarquin Wilding, have a similar interest in motorbikes. The younger son of Christopher Wilding and Aileen Getty, Andrew Wilding, was born in 1984. He is the second grandchild of Elizabeth Taylor, and the younger son, of Christopher Wilding. Although Andrew comes from a well-known family, he has chosen to work behind the scenes in the film business rather than in front of the camera. This decision has allowed him to carve out his unique route in the industry. Andrew is mostly famous for his abilities as a cinematographer and producer, having established a reputation for himself in the business. Although he has a few acting credits to his resume, Andrew is primarily recognized for his capabilities in these areas. In an interview with People magazine, Aileen Getty, who is married to Christopher Wilding and is Elizabeth Taylor's daughter-in-law, candidly discussed the challenges she has faced in her personal life. Following the completion of some difficult pregnancies, Getty and her husband decided to adopt Caleb, and she went on to give birth to Andrew eventually. On the other hand, her happiness was short-lived because she was given a tragic HIV diagnosis when Caleb was a toddler and Andrew was just six months old. Getty, who was feeling overwhelmed, relocated to New York City, where she struggled with addiction, which ultimately resulted in her boys being placed in foster care for a short period. Having realized that her children deserved more, Getty sought assistance, conquered her addiction, and established a secure environment for them. She acknowledged that her children are her lifeline. Tarquin Wilding, who is the younger sibling of Lee and Naomi Wilding, 
is the seventh granddaughter of Elizabeth Taylor. Tarquin Wilding is the youngest of the Wilding siblings. The intricate tree of the Taylor family, which includes relatives with names that are similar to one another, such as Tarquin and Quinn, might be confusing. Nevertheless, Tarquin's connection to his family goes beyond the names of his relatives. Tarquin, who is the son of Michael Wilding Jr. and Brooke Palance, has nothing but praise for his eccentric, loving, and emotionally delicate family. He was born into a famous family. His mother's father, Jack Palance, was an Oscar-winning actor best remembered for his performance in City Slickers, and he has a long line of famous relatives, according to a 2017 interview with Town & Country. Tarquin Wilding, who is just 28 years old, is following in his famous cousin, Andrew Wilding's footsteps as a cinematographer in Hollywood. Tarquin cherishes his big and caring family and thinks about his grandma Elizabeth Taylor with affection. Having been born into a family of eccentric, kind, and sensitive people is a blessing, Tarquin said in an interview with Town & Country, and he is grateful for it. Along with recognizing the importance of his grandmother's heritage, he expressed gratitude for the opportunity to carry on her legacy and praised her generosity. Tarquin Wilding is only one of several grandchildren of Elizabeth Taylor who have lived up to her legendary reputation. Tarquin is forging his way as a filmmaker, motorcyclist, and sometimes actor. Having had a memorable cameo on Shameless 2015 on Showtime. Nevertheless, his dedication as an Elizabeth Taylor AIDS Foundation ambassador is motivated by the impact of his grandmother. My grandma was an idol and a formidable figure, Tarquin says, with awe. Daily, her unfaltering kindness and courageous spirit motivate me. In her memory, he hopes to make a difference in the battle against HIV AIDS and see the day when the disease is finally eradicated. Wolcott Wilding, Christopher Wilding, and Margaret Carton welcomed a son, Lowell, in 1991, and Lowell's life's work is carrying on his famous grandmother's work. An important undertaking of the Elizabeth Taylor Trust, he is instrumental in gathering materials for the Elizabeth Taylor Archive. Because of his grandmother's selfless fight against HIV AIDS, Lowell also acts as an ambassador for the Elizabeth Taylor AIDS Foundation. By stating, I've always been in wonder of my grandmother's remarkable accomplishments, he conveyed his respect for her sacrifice. Instead of doing nothing, she battled, cared for, and labored ceaselessly for the sake of people who were suffering. In whatever manner I can, I want to carry on and protect her work. Tyvee Reese. According to what Reese Tyvee claimed in 2017, her grandma wanted to get to the heart of the matter. She insisted on starting with the most implausible and difficult task. Happy Tyvee and Liza Todd's second son Reese earned a degree in jazz performance from New York University. He volunteered with after-school programs at the city's public schools, where he put his abilities to good use. Because of his versatility, Reese has become well-known in the art world. He relocated from rural upstate New York to the city so he could attend the Steinhardt School of Music at New York University, where he developed a deep love for music. Even though he's just 33 years old, he's already a triple threat a trumpet player, vocalist, and composer. Outside of the stage, Reese loves music just as much. Additionally, he gives back to the community by instructing middle schoolers in yoga and music from Brooklyn to Manhattan and the Bronx. Reese is deeply committed to upholding the value and dignity of every person, irrespective of their origins or situations, drawing inspiration from the legacy of his grandmother, Elizabeth Taylor. His music and life are shaped by this idea, which promotes inclusion and a feeling of community. To lessen his influence on the earth, 
Reese has adopted a vegan diet, which is fueled by his enthusiasm for environmental sustainability. Especially among the youth of today, he stresses the critical importance of taking action on climate change. Giving back is an important part of Reese's life, alongside his creative and environmentally conscious pursuits. In continuing his grandmother's legacy of caring for the underserved, he donates to causes dear to the Elizabeth Taylor AIDS Foundation. Stephen McKeown Elizabeth Taylor adopted Maria Burton as her daughter, and Richard McKeown is her youngest grandchild. The adoption of Maria from Germany began when Taylor, now married to Eddie Fisher, began the process of creating this special familial link. Even though Taylor's marriage to Richard Burton was necessary to legitimize the adoption, Maria became her fourth child. Since Richard McKeown's mother was adopted by the renowned Elizabeth Taylor, there is a strong link to her in his family tree. Richard McKeown has remained out of the spotlight, although he came from a troubled home. Richard, whose middle name is Richard, was reportedly living with his mother, Maria Burton, when she filed for a restraining order against Richard's father, Tom McKeown, as reported by Wales Online. Elizabeth Taylor's constant encouragement and empathy helped Maria overcome her hip issue, which she had from birth and which had many operations. The moment Taylor said, I want her all the more because she's ill, her maternal instincts came rushing in. Perhaps I can provide some assistance. Maria sought refuge from her father, Tom McKeown, and joined her mother in Bel Air in 2004, thanks to Taylor's provision of a haven. Their affection only deepened with the years. The following generation gets to know the famed Taylors, including Elizabeth Taylor's great-grandchildren. The great-grandson of the renowned Elizabeth Taylor, Finn McMurray, is proudly representing the Elizabeth Taylor AIDS Foundation, continuing her charitable work. Speaking to Town & Country magazine, Finn conveyed the family's unwavering commitment, saying, We're all deeply invested in this cause and committed to building on her remarkable work. Elizabeth Taylor's charitable work is being supported by Paris Jackson, who is both Elizabeth's goddaughter and Michael Jackson's daughter. Paris is committed to increasing HIV-AIDS awareness on a worldwide scale in her role as an ambassador for the Elizabeth Taylor AIDS Foundation. Elizabeth Taylor was an incredible symbol and pioneer, Paris said in an interview with People, and she admired her for her influence. Her incredible life exemplifies how one individual can change the world. The famous actress and stepdaughter of Elizabeth Taylor, Kate Burton, has always been very loyal to her stepmother, says Burton. Burton has featured in Grey's Anatomy and Scandal, among other parts. Supposedly, Kate lauded Elizabeth Taylor for her innovative AIDS research, saying that it has greatly benefited many people with the disease, including friends and co-workers of those affected. Her life and work are fascinating, and her humanitarian legacy is thriving. So Elizabeth Taylor's influence will last for years to come. In their unwavering commitment to continuing her legacy, her loved ones and admirers continue to live by her motto, you might as well live. They are living proof of their famous grandma's legacy, which will endure for generations. Elizabeth Taylor's family is doing everything they can to keep her humanitarian spirit alive and well, turning her legendary status into a lasting legacy. However, how are her offspring ensuring that her legacy will continue? In light of her extraordinary life, and steadfast credo, you might as well live, what wisdom can we glean from it? Elizabeth Taylor, her enduring impact. Two Academy Awards were bestowed upon the legendary Elizabeth Taylor. From an Egyptian queen to a juvenile horseback rider, her amazing career displayed her beauty and ability in a variety of roles. Her legacy continues 
even after she died on March 23, 2011. Following the dissolution of her marriage to Nikki Hilton in the 1950s, Taylor made Los Angeles her permanent home, living in a modest apartment. Even though Taylor had a troubled personal life and died of congestive heart failure, her generosity and commitment to Los Angeles charities demonstrated that celebrity does not necessarily corrode the heart. Elizabeth Taylor's interactions in Los Angeles showed a more genuine and modest side in contrast to her glitzy on-screen image, despite her prolific film career that took her all over the world. Her most enduring legacy is the loving family she built, including her remarkable children and grandchildren, who have achieved great things thanks to the values she instilled in them and the guidance she provided. Are you impressed by her grandson? Who is the most like her? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below. We would love to hear from you. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more interesting updates. Thank you and see you in the next videos.